COVID-19 check. Now remember the country has reported more than 13,000 cases in the last 24 hours. The number of deaths reported were 23 in these 24 hours. The active case load has now risen to over 68,000 while the positivity rate inches closer to 3%. Right now the COVID positivity rate remember stands at 2.73% in the country. Among the metro cities, Delhi, the national capital, has logged nearly 1,800 fresh cases of COVID-19, while Mumbai reported more than 2,200 cases of COVID-19. I'm being joined by my colleague Sharon live on the broadcast who's reporting from the national capital. Uh, Sharon, some concerning bit of news coming in from the national capital. Clearly, there's a surge, there's a jump in, in, in the number of cases. And what is all the more concerning is that there has been a certain rise in terms of the, you know, hospitalization rate. So what does the ground situation exactly look like if we talk about the hospitalization rate going up in Delhi right now? Uh, well, the cases in last 24 hours have been, in fact, uh, around 1,800. And uh, this is after about uh, uh, two months altogether because the last time we have seen around 1,000 cases in the national capital was uh, in the beginning of uh, May month. And there was, in fact, a decline in the cases as far as, uh, uh, the Delhi is, uh, as far as Delhi is concerned. And now there are also hospitalization that are being reported. In the latest bulletin by the Delhi government, it shows that around 196 people are, in fact, admitted in the hospital hospitalization and two are being treated in the ICU. So it is in fact a very concerning situation. The positivity rate is also beyond 3% as of now in the national capital. Overall also if you see the cases have in fact crossed 13,000. So it is in fact a concerning situation apart from Delhi uh, in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Maharashtra are also reporting a uh, uh, huge number of cases and that is why there was in fact a recent meeting by the health ministry with all these states where they were in fact told that the testing needs to increase. Apart from that all the samples need to to go to genome sequencing to see whether there is in fact any new variant that has come into place because of uh, the increasing cases that are being reported. Apart from that, the CPRA, which is the emergency fund that has been uh, you know, uh, allocated for uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, that needs to be used. Center has released about 100% of the fund of for the emergency fund and have asked all the states to ensure that all these funds are in fact used uh, uh, focusing on uh, COVID-19 situation. The PSA plans need to be implemented. Apart from that, the ICUs and the oxygen cylinders need to be in place so that we can fight in case there is in fact a new wave. But as of now, there is no concern of new wave is what the scientists have also been saying. This is still a third wave that is in fact pertaining in number of states. This is the remaining part of the third wave is what the scientists have also been suggesting. All right, Sharon, thank you so much for joining us with all those key details. And I'm also being joined by Dr. Ishwar Gilada, consultant in infectious diseases, and Dr. Rakesh Mishra, director of the Tata Institute of Genetics and Society. Thank you so much for your time to mirror now, sir. And I want to begin here, in fact, by asking both of you that do you think somewhere this whole upsurge in terms of the number of cases being reported across the country is coming in at a time when people are taking the whole idea of taking the booster shot very lightly, you know, owing to this carefree, chalta hai attitude, ki, you know, so there is no COVID, COVID has gone, COVID has subsided. So do you think somewhere the surge in cases is coming in because there is hesitancy and this whole, you know, carelessness when it comes to going out and taking the booster shot? Are you asking me, Pooja? Yes, I'm asking both of you. We can start with okay. Dr. Ishwar okay. Galada. Okay. Okay. Basically, yes, uh, what you are saying is right. Ideally, vaccination is best done when the COVID or any infection is lying low. When it is lying up, then uh, there is always confusion whether you are vaccinating person who is already uh, inculcating the virus, incubating the virus, or infected already. Secondly, such waves will keep on coming. You cannot call it wave, they are just ripples. And uh, when we are reaching towards endemicity, this will happen. Thirdly, you don't look at only number of cases, you look at the trajectory. Uh, just now in your promo, it was shown that only two people out, out of uh, some uh, 1,700 people in uh, the, uh, national capital, they are in ICU. So uh, the be, uh, oxygen requirement, bed requirement, ICU requirement, very low. Deaths are very low. What we see currently, that 0.1% is a case fatality rate. 
and case fatality rate in flu is also the same 0.1% when we are not bothered about flu why we should be bothered about covid yes genome sequencing is important look at whether newer variants are coming or not uh, increase your vaccination speed which is very low currently we are vaccinating only 15 lakh a day and uh, uh, our capacity was around 2.5 crore a day so we are hardly using 6% of capacity those we are below 18 very poor vaccination in maharashtra itself below 18 is only 26% one dose 12% uh, two doses a booster people are not taking so i think we should boost up that booster mechanism those below 60 should be given free vaccine rather than paid vaccine because we made people to use uh, get used to free uh, vaccines so suddenly you start charging people will not pay and uh, only keeping one channel of paid vaccination in many states in some state they are giving free but some state they are not giving so we should uh, look at that and also there are vaccines for below 12 there are many uh, committees in the country they sometimes work at cross purposes one committee like dcgi says vaccine can be given based on such and such study but nitagi which is a national uh, uh, technical advisory group on immunization they sit on it for two months three months four months and then they decide uh, just yesterday okay. they decided that uh, the gap between second and third dose can be reduced from nine month to six month that we have been telling telling for last five months again ministry of health has to decide whether that can be done or not so i think we should reduce that kind of bureaucracy and uh, act with some kind of urgency then uh, vaccination can be done faster all right thank you so much dr ishwar gelada dr akesh mishra your two cents on this what do you think All right, we're trying to connect with Dr. Rakesh Mishra once again, sir. If you could just uh, unmute yourself, because we are really interested to know your views on, you know, how, what exactly is leading to this massive surge in cases in India. Somewhere I see it as the lack of, uh, you know, seriousness when it comes to t going out and taking the booster shot, and you know, the scare-free attitude where people are, have made peace with the fact that, okay, you know, the, the the worst is over, COVID is gone, it won't return. So, according to you, if I may ask you, so what do you? think is massively contributing to the surge all right uh, till the time we're trying to reconnect with dr rakesh mishra okay okay i have dr rakesh mishra back with me on the broadcast yes sir your views on this yeah, so i just wanted to uh, add that uh, we are in a very strong position as far as this pandemic is concerned very large number of people have been uh, vaccinated fully vaccinated and we have hybrid immunity whole population including children because of the earlier infections so uh, but what happens is that after several months of vaccination uh, the antibody levels tend to go down so we may get infected which doesn't mean that we are going to fall sick but boosters help in that part because if we get the booster then antibody level will go up and even the initial infection will be avoided so that's why i'm very happy that government has now decided to reduce the time gap between the second dose and the third which was very much necessary particularly when we have lot the vaccine stock available uh, so we should use that and that's the best uh, way we can uh, 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 make the final winning shots uh, against this uh, uh, this virus but at the same time i think we uh, have to take this as a signal we don't have to worry so much but this also means that virus is around so there are ways of uh, taking precaution of avoiding crowd and wearing masks is very very important and if we are vaccinated when we are very safe no need to worry no need for any of the restrictions and all we, with some self discipline we can manage everything uh, as we have been doing but we have to keep keep this in mind that virus is around and we are saying all this with the current uh, situation of a variant a new more nasty variant may appear that is what is the main concern that we should be very very watchful and that's why you have very rightly mentioned your reporter that government has already pushed for uh, a genome surveillance so that we will be able to uh, figure out if there is a new variant coming or not and accordingly we can change the strategy but at the moment i think we are uh, there is nothing much to worry 
All right, sir, even though, you know, time and again, scientists, in fact, also have been having concerns over a fourth wave. But, you know, what is concerning at the moment is the fact that, in fact, the hospitalization is rising, both in, if I talk about the national capital, Delhi also, there has been a rise in terms of the hospital admissions. And even, uh, you know, in Mumbai also, we know Maharashtra is reporting almost 4,000 cases every day. And Mumbai is majorly contributing to Maharashtra search. So, you know, the hospitalization rate is going up here also by the day. So, do you think, are we prepared enough? Have we taken our lessons from the second wave are we prepared enough to battle this i think we are very uh, we are in much stronger position compared to earlier wave there is no comparison and uh, uh, please remember that hospitalization means people have symptom and they should go to hospitalize so that they are monitored but ic icus or oxygen shortage those things are uh, are um, uh, less uh, observed and in fact the mortality and that thing is, uh, uh, is, is really, really low, which we don't have to worry about. So there are two reasons for it. Because we are vaccinated, so we have cellular immunity. When we get infected, our T cell will take care and we will not fall very sick. And But even this virus, the Omicron and its sub-lineages, they affect largely the upper respiratory tract, so the, the symptoms are not set that severe. So uh, okay. having said that, the new variant we should watch out. And otherwise, I think the uh, number of hospitalization is not uh, something of a uh, major concern and we are fully prepared. But we have to take okay. care of vulnerable. Uh, uh, Dr. Ishwar Gilada, what do you think on this hospitalization rate going up? See, hospitalization proportionately going up uh, because cases are going up is fine. But if they are disproportionately going up, that is wrong. So I think it is not disproportionate hospitalization at all. A lot of people are either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. And some people are getting hospitalized just because of the morbidity, comorbidity they have or age they have, uh, which is not on their side. Otherwise, uh, hospitalization is not so much. And there are still beds available, doctors available. Everything is in control. And we are well prepared because uh, second wave was we were caught unawares and we never thought. And as you said, there are people like a Sutra model uh, saying um, a lot of projections. And so they, they said that second wave is not going to come. And the same model said that on 21st of June, there will be fourth wave. So they even given a date. So we believe in such kind of people who have no acquaintance with health. They are IITNs. Yes, we salute them for their IITL, uh, IITN contribution, but they do not understand public health. So I think we should be uh, prepared. Pandemic preparedness should be there. It did not be knee jerkism that suddenly cases go up. So we start preparing. And secondly, uh, in the current Omicron wave and even previous Omicron wave, oxygen requirement was minimal, hardly any oxygen requirement. And therefore, a okay. lot of things, they, they just go get improved within just two to three days. It's like a flu comes, uh, right. when a patient is admitted within two, two or three days, patient get uh, discharged. So I okay. think we should not be worried. Uh, it should be treated just like a flu. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to Mirror Now. So that was Dr. Ishwar Gilada and Dr. Rakesh Mishra sharing their views and sending out a strong message to all our viewers that what is important at the moment is to be aware is to be vigilant, not to let your guard down. However, uh, they, go, they, they in fact assert the fact that the situation is not alarming. We are very well prepared to battle the fourth wave, if at all there is one. But for now, ensure that those masks are up and you follow COVID-appropriate norms.